Hi, my name is Randall Hunt. I'm a software engineer and developer evangelist here at Amazon Web Services, and I'm here today with Rick Houlihan, the master of all things NoSQL. Thanks, Randall. I'm really glad to be here. Thanks for coming. So I wanted to let our audience kind of know, what exactly is the difference between a relational database and a, non uh, a NoSQL database? Sure. Uh, well, and it's actually a, a fundamental difference because we've had, for many years, we've used the relational technology and we're very familiar with it. And so a lot of developers out there today are saying, why do I even want to look at NoSQL technology? And, and the reality is it's, we've kind of outgrown the relational database. It doesn't necessarily scale the way we need it to scale today. We're processing a lot more data than we did 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, and so the requirements of, of the application, the modern application, are fundamentally different. So the way we actually have to design is different. So we've built the new technology to do that. So when you talk about what we put in a database, what are the kinds of stuff, what are the kinds of things that we would put in a, in a traditional relational database like MySQL or Postgres? versus the kinds of things that we would put in one of these NoSQL databases. Sure. So it's the same data, right? We all use the same data in all of our applications. It's more or less how we actually work with the data. So probably a better, good idea would be to look at the chart here that we have up. In, in a traditional environment, we kind of design things relationally, right? We use a no, th normal form. This is a third normal form that we can see up here. It's a product catalog. And that's just a, a common computer science, common computer science, science term. term. Yeah. Uh, people who understand databases are going to know what I'm talking about. And there's kind of these relationships between these tables. We have products table here. We have books and albums and tracks. And, or videos, and, and these things all have relationships between each other, one-to-many, many-to-many relationships, and we'll write some kind of query to go ahead and reassemble the data the way we need to look at it. Do a join. Out. Do a join, exactly. And so if you can imagine from just looking at the schema, if I wanted to write queries to get all of my data, there's three different queries of varying, le varying levels of complexity that we're going to need. If I went with a denormalized approach, what I'm really doing is taking that hierarchy of data and moving it into documents. Each one of my products is now represented by a document, and as a simple query, select star from products gets me everything. So that's the idea. We want to make things simple with NoSQL. We want to make the query patterns and access patterns easy for the customer. And what kind of things does that gain us? That gains us a lot of efficiency and cost, you know, cost effectiveness of the solution, right? Relational databases today are very expensive to scale. When we get beyond a certain size, I have to get a bigger box. The only way I can scale up is to get bigger boxes and it becomes a, a nightmare to try and manage the data and it's extremely expensive. Uh, with NoSQL database, we've got a much more cost effective solution because we can scale horizontally across commodity boxes, uh, and we can use a denormalized data model to be able to uh, provide simple access patterns for our customers. So in Amazon, we have Amazon DynamoDB, which yes. is a really, really cool service. Could you tell us a little more about yeah, that? Fully managed NoSQL database, and one of the things about managing distributed databases is that they cost a lot from an operations perspective. So this is something that we can bring to the table, manage that infrastructure for you. As a customer, you don't have to. Uh, that's probably the biggest advantage that we get from Dynamo. Way cool. So if so customers want to get started with NoSQL on AWS, where do they go? They go to aws.amazon.com slash NoSQL. There's a full intro there. It talks all about it. We have best practices for DynamoDB. They'll get you started on design patterns and how to actually implement. Way cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks.